everything he wants me to have, all that he wants me to do, who he wants me to be. I want all the benefits. So, so I was there maybe five or ten minutes just working with this girl because it always amazes me. It amazes me the number of people that just don't expect anything to happen. What happens? We lose that accent along the way. We lose expectancy. We don't lose the desire for prayer. But we lose something's really going to happen now. I mean, we'll take it over three weeks, but we like now. I mean, we'll take a healing and cancer in a year, but we'd like it right now. I'll take a million dollars in two years, but I'd like it. You got to get some other stuff off your mind and ask yourself what's most important. So I said, here we go. We're going to begin to believe God to touch you. And boy, I just grabbed her head and shook her head a little bit and released the power. And I said, come on, now stand. One, two, three, stand. She jumped up and her legs were shaking. And she just standing. there. And here's what's coming out of her mouth. I, I don't believe it. 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 I said, I know, but I do. <laughs> You're riding on my faith right now. I mean, God will jump your battery. But he don't want you to drive around with cables on all day long. So she's screaming in front of the whole church. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And they're all standing and clapping and crying and everything. And I said, okay, yeah, that was the deal. Tonight you stand. Tomorrow night you walk in here. I said, but that. And then the Holy Ghost said, tell her to go home tonight. And put the wheelchair up against the refrigerator. And get out there and lane up against the refrigerator. And stay there as long as she can. And if she'll do that, she'll walk in here tomorrow. And the lady said to me, she said, the refrigerator. I said, lady, it's better than putting mud in your face. I'll tell you that right now. I said, at least you get to stay in your own house, keep your clothes on. Come on, somebody. I mean, if you want to keep going to the doctor and taking your clothes off, go ahead. I said, if you do what, what I believe God's saying to do, you'll walk in here tomorrow night. This is paralyzed. This isn't a bad back, a sore back. This isn't the L4, the L5. This isn't spinal stenosis. This is paralyzed. See, God's very serious about your recovery. He's very serious about the name you carry and, and to live out your years. You see, yeah, but people die. Well, yeah, we're not afraid of death. We just don't want to die before our time. We want to live out our years in grace and strength and power. So the next night, you know, the service had started, she was nowhere around. So I was on the stage getting ready to come out to do the service. And I thought, oh, well, you know, let's, let's just wait and see. So I stood up and I began to open up in prayer. And all of a sudden, I saw the back doors open on the church. She was late. And she came walking, and she looked a little like Frankenstein. No, but, but she was walking like this. Walking. And when she walked in, it wasn't pretty. A lot of miracles in their initial stage isn't pretty. You know, even the man that Jesus prayed for saw the men as trees. You know, so sometimes just breaking out of, out of darkness, out of soundlessness, out of pain, out of addiction. And she came walking, and when she came walking in... I said, well, look at you. Look at you, miss. I can't do anything. Look at you. I can't stand. I can't walk. Don't embarrass me. Aren't you glad I embarrassed you? And, she, and I said, she said, oh, my God. She said, I got my life back. You see, you don't, you don't get anywhere unless you... Ch faith must be challenged. You comfort hearts, but you challenge faith. You know, when I was healed in Miss Kuhlman's service, I was... I had, to, I had to be carried in because I was paralyzed on this side. And I had to patch over my eye because my vision was double and triple. And I had cancer lumps all over my back, two, three inches high. So when I stu was stood, stood in front of her, and she came over and said, do you believe? And I, it just scared me just the way her person was kind of scary anyhow. <laughs> and I just shook my head, yeah, I believe. And so she turned around to walk away from me. And then she spun around and she said, I said, do you believe? 
Well, I realized evidently I don't. <laughs> but I thought that I did. Did you ever try and shake your head yes and no at the same time? Because that's where a lot of us are. We do, but we don't. You know, we have enough faith to walk on water, but enough doubt to sink. We have mixture in us. And as she came over, she said, uh, she said, and when, when she touched me, that power, if you've never felt the power, you may not even need to heal, but in, there's a move coming. There's a move coming. I'm telling you, we're the people. We're going to carry a tangible presence about us. It's going to be inside of you, a deposit. Come on, say a deposit, deposit. of fire and, fire and light that cannot be put out. Come on, say an automatic glow, automatic glow. Everywhere, I go. everywhere I go. And it's going to be amazing. amazing. It's going to be stronger than any feeling you've ever had. I mean, stronger than drugs, stronger than alcohol, stronger than pornographic films, pro stronger than any food you've ever eaten. There's going to be a tangible presence that's going to be in God's people before the great catching away. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on, somebody. But if you don't get more manifested minded, I don't know where we're going to have lunch today after church, but I want real food manifested on the table. Do you hear me? I don't want faith food today. I want real food that hits my mouth that goes inside of me. Manifest it. That's where you got to put the pressure is I want to manifest it. You're getting way too much fulfillment out of, I'm standing in faith, I'm standing in faith. That's good. It's better than not standing in faith. But you got to not you standing in faith as an excuse not to put pressure on that yoke. Come on, every prayer you pray puts pressure on the yoke. Every time you're slain puts pressure on the yoke. Come on, every drop of oil puts pressure on the yoke. Come on, every declaration you make puts pressure on the yoke. Is about to break. There you go. Come on, that yoke is about to break. Hallelujah. Move on out. Go ahead. Move on out. But you, you, go you gotta, you, you gotta get everybody sit down on the inside. You see, there's a difference between God's presence and God's power. Presence and power are not the same. Two or more are gathered, there I am. That don't mean anybody gets healed, don't mean anybody gets the Holy Ghost, anybody gets delivered, but he's there. I went up from church, I felt the Lord. Boy, I felt him, boy, I felt him. That's good to feel him, because that presence makes you not feel yourself. But what you want is presence and the power. Come on, say presence and the power. See, and that's whenever you begin to realize that your situation is doable. I mean, every week, our office gets flooded every week. Not a week goes by. Ask Billy if he's ever seen this healing. How about Lou Gehrig's disease? How about spinal bifida? How about, and, and the list just goes on. Because people out there are hopeless. Because they don't think anybody's ever been set free from what they got. And I tell my secretary, tell him yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, and we have a card on that, and a, a paper on that, and a movie on that, and yes, and yes, how about the, and yes, and every once in a while we'll get something, I'll go, I don't know what that one is, I, I honestly don't know what that one is, but for the most part, there's people all over the world looking to find out somebody that is contemporary. None of you is going to go to eat today after church and argue whether Lazarus really died or not. You're not going to go out here and have a burger and say, I don't know if Bartimaeus was really blind. You think Bartimaeus was blind? We hear stuff every week we already believe about them. Our problem is not them. Our problem is can he do it for me? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, he can do it for you.
you got to begin to get manifested. You got to ask yourself, why am I, why am I going for prayer? Because there's, there's a feel good about prayer. You feel good. I got prayer. Hey, honey, how was church today? Really good. Hey, did you get the elders to lay hands on you? Yeah, I love that elder Sam. He's a precious man. I love elder Sam. And do they pray for it? Yeah, they prayed. And I, I feel better. I'm just glad I got prayer. I got to go stop by and get some deliverance. Get them all out. Come on, somebody. Get them all out. Don't get some deliverance. Get them all out. Some prayer. Why? Because there's such fulfillment in it. Such fulfillment in getting prayer. Makes you feel better that you did. But there's nothing that you got that can't be eradicated. Do you hear me? But you got to, you got to, I mean, you got to jump all over besides prayer. We had a guy in Fort Myers. He had, both of his carotid arteries were completely blocked. And he came up on the stage. He was a Baptist. Had never been in a Pentecostal service before. But he said, I saw your advertisement in the paper. And he said, I'm scheduled for surgery on Tuesday. And he said, I thought to myself, maybe that guy's telling the truth. Now, this is a Baptist. This guy don't even have the Holy Ghost. And he said, I'm thinking if I go there and that guy can do what that advertisement says, I won't have to have surgery. I said, dear God, he's better than some full gospel people. <laughs> so he comes to the service. He comes walking up on the stage and he's standing there watching people getting touched and healed. And so he come over and he said, first words out of his mouth is he said, I'm a Baptist. <laughs> I said, well, praise God. We love the Baptist people. We love them. We love Baptist people. I said, what do you need? He told me the story. I said, well, let's believe God's going to open up both your car carotid arteries. He'll open them up tonight. He said, you mean they'll open up tonight? I said, well, you're here tonight, aren't you? <laughs> he said, yeah. I said, they're going to open up tonight. And he said, well, I'm supposed to have surgery on Tuesday. Well, I said, I said, you're supposed to. That's what you said, you're supposed to, right? I said, let's get, come on, let's get moving with this program. So I touched this guy. The power hit this guy. I love when God hits the Baptist really strong, you know. <laughs> I, I love when there's no question left. So this guy hits the floor. Well, he's down there, and he's just moving all over the place. He'd never had that happen. Well, he, he shouted out, what would you do to me? What did you do to me? I said, that's the Holy Ghost. He said, the Holy who? I said, the Holy Ghost. He said, Holy Ghost. He's down there just moving all over the place. Here's the greatest part of the story right here. Here's the greatest part of the story. So he goes, after he leaves the meeting, after that great experience, you would think he would be convinced. But he leaves the meeting Monday, and he goes in for pre-op surgery Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. So they prep him. They put the gown on him, put him on the gurney. He's laying horizontal on the gurney, and the nurse comes over to do the swab and put the intravenous needle in. And she just wiped his elbow and was ready to put the needle and he said, hold it, hold it, ma'am. She said, what's the matter? He said, I was at a meeting two days ago. Now he's telling the nurse this, who's about to knock him out. <laughs> and he said, I was at a meeting, ma'am, and he's there. This man prayed for me. He said, honest to God, ma'am, there was something that went all through me. He said it was the Holy Ghost. And the nurse said, well, I'm glad that happened to you. But she said, we got to hurry up. There's people in front of you and people behind you. We got to get this moving. Now, come on. He said, no, but I want another x-ray before I have surgery. He said, I think something might have happened because I never felt anything like that. Well, here the surgeon came out, took his mask off, put his mask down. He said, what's the problem here? He told the story to the surgeon. He said, doctor, I was at a meeting two days ago. And this man prayed for me and something went all through me and he said it was the Holy Ghost. And the surgeon said, okay, well, all right, so what are you saying? He said, I don't know that that's still the problem with my neck. The doctor said, sir, we have x-rays. I know, but that was before that man prayed for me on Sunday night. And he said, the Holy Ghost. Okay, I got that about the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he said, could you take another picture? See, this man was pressing for manifestation. He didn't settle for a good prayer. 
He didn't say, oh, I got a good word. I mean, how long can you sit on an egg before it cracks? Come on, somebody. And the doctor said, well, sir, you know, we got people in front, people in behind. The guy said, just one quick x-ray. Just one, doctor, please. He said, because I, I just have to know that I know that I know. I might not have to have surgery. He said the doctor's attitude was, oh, all right, we're going we're gonna to do this. And they took him, out, took him out of the line, took him in to get an x-ray. And guess what? Both of his arteries were completely open. Now, now. The doctor said, would you say that guy's name was to pray for you? He said, where's that meeting at? And this was a Baptist who came back to that Pentecostal church right over here at the Silver Dome in Fort Myers and came back and stood on that stage. And he said, boy, I want to apologize. I was wrong about you. He said, I saw you in the newspaper. He had a white suit on. I thought, there, there's another white suit on another guy. I don't another... He said, but and he said, what I felt I can't argue with, I don't understand it. And he said, but boy, and I went and that doctor come out and, and, and he said, you know, I didn't have to have, he said, I hate anesthesia. He said, I don't like when somebody knocks me out. I don't mind going to sleep, but I don't like when somebody puts me to sleep. He went into this whole thing, you know, and I said, but sir, aren't you glad that Jesus paid the price? Aren't you glad? And then I said, I'm going to give you a lot of credit because you pushed. How many people would do that? How many people would go get pre-op, be on a gurney, and how many people get prayer and just go do it anyhow without any checking at all? Man, the first thing you should do after you get up off the floor or after you come out of a great meeting where you're putting your faith on the line I mean, is where you begin to inspect the work of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord right now. Come on, hurry, hurry. Come on, somebody give God a shout in this place. You gotta have it now. I gotta have it now. I gotta get it now. Right now. You're going to get tired of the warm fuzzy. If you really want to see better, hear better. No pain. No medication. Way too many medicated believers. I don't know if they got the joy or they're just medicated. Come on, somebody. <laughs> it's true. You know why it's true? Because it's easier. And so we choose easy instead of right a lot of our life. Pressing in to touch the hem takes some work. Do you hear me? Being yourself brought down through a roof takes some work. Takes some effort. Climbing a tree. How many felt like climbing a tree this morning before you came to church? There got some of you had trouble getting here in a car. You didn't even have to ride a camel. Come on. But you got to begin to put everything aside and say, man, I got the spit, I got the DNA, I got the mud, I got the hand, I got the word, but I got to get to the point. I got to get manifestation. Or else you'll just become someone addicted to prayer your whole life. We need some people in the fast lane to receive miracles so that the people in the waiting line can hear your story and get healed. Come on, give God a shout tonight all over this place. So let's get past that. Let's begin to get in position for up, our up and coming services. And, and you can get there, but it takes a little bit, of, a different kind of preparation. People know how to get ready for Thanksgiving. They know how to get ready for Christmas. They can get ready for a wedding. You can get ready for a funeral. You can get ready for a shower. You can get ready for church. But how do you get ready for a miracle? Just because you're ready for church doesn't mean you're ready for a miracle. Different preparation. Whole different preparation. 
you know, you got to really get it. When I, that day that I was healed, you know, I was just a young boy. I didn't know how to get, it, to get ready. But my grandmother spent four days with me. I was discharged from a hospital in Pittsburgh against doctor's wishes. They said he'll be dead in three days. My grandmother spent around the clock in my face saying, when she touches you. When she touches you. When she touches you. I was drinking through a straw. Morphine couldn't stop the pain. They had towels soaked in buckets of ice water trying to alleviate the pain. And my grandmother was beginning to annoy me because it was just relentless. My speech was slurred. And I drugged my right leg. And she's telling me about this lady I don't even know. You know, a lot of times you're not in the mood to get healed. You're sitting here need healed, but you just had a fight with your wife. Come on, somebody. You need to heal, but you're worried about your job. You need your eyes healed, your ears healed, your back healed. Come on, your spine healed. But you're sitting here worried about your children. And sometimes you've got to take care of you so you can take care of them. You've got to think about you sometimes. So I'm standing in front of Catherine Coleman, and Catherine Coleman says, well, do you believe? And she turned around, and I said, well, yeah, and like that. And that hand started coming towards me. As that hand was coming towards me, I could hear my grandmother's voice when she touches you. See, my grandmother had done for me what I couldn't do for myself. She got me prepared. And now we try and get people and teach them how to get prepared. You've taken sick days in most of your life. I may have taken some sick days, let me see. Start taking some healing days. <laughs> Call off work for your healing. Come on, somebody. Amen. Get your Bible, get your DVD and your CD and go down by the ocean and just get filled and just start getting ready. And start saying, man, when I get into the shadow of that man, when I get into that meeting, when I get near that woman, when I, when that revival coming up, or when Jerry's here. I mean, begin to, you know, begin to recalibrate your faith. Yes. Yeah, but I did and it didn't work. Reset it. The secret to getting healed is resetting, recalibrating your faith. Come on, just because you have a sh bad shopping day, you didn't quit. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on. Right? You had some lean years, but you're not staying lean. See, and the thing of it is, is, is you know, and when that hand touched me, man, all, all heaven broke loose. I'm expecting November the 3rd. I'm expecting things to happen that's just amazing. And I believe it's going to happen to many, many of you. But I don't want you to wait till that day. I want you to begin to think and prepare. And begin to think about what you want God to do on that particular day. He's healing fibroid tumors right now. Fibroid tumors. Where are you? Somebody here with fibroid tumors. Quickly. Fibroid tumors. Fibroids. Matter of fact, there's more than one of you. Come, 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 come. Hurry, ma'am. Come. My God, get over here. Come, move out. How when long he you speaks, had this? you run. How long when you had this? Hear me? When he speaks, you run. Ten years. Where's it hurt at? In the uterus. It hurts there? No pain, but it's just there. They're there. Can you feel them? No. Can't feel them. No. When's the last time you were checked? Three months ago. And they told you that it's in your uterus? Yes. There's no pain? No pain. No pain. There's no pain, no pain. and there's no tumors. Whew, by the Holy Ghost. Whew. He's all over you, ma'am. He's all over you. Not only is God, is God canceling the tumors, he's canceling also a lot of the rejection you've been living with. That's the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Fibroids, how long you had these? It's been for a while. What do you mean for a while? Well. Can you feel them? No, I don't feel it. I don't feel any pain. When I had ultrasound, mm -hmm. I was told. Only come up there. for what's been called. A, you hear uh, me? A week ago or two. Don't come up just because you want the hands laid on you. By the Holy Ghost, we give you praise by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yes, what's this, ma'am? Fibroids. How bad is it? I have my cycle twice a month. So your cycle's irregular? Oh, yes. A lot of it causes me to be 
anemic. Really? So you take any iron for that or what are you taking? Uh huh. You'll never have to do it again. You'll never have to do it again. Yes, ma'am. When you had those. And the pain? Can you feel, you have irregular bleeding? Or was you bleeding when you came in today? So when do you bleed? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. And the power of God's all over you. The power of God's all over you. Yes. Over 20 years. Over 20 years. Tell me about it. They're, they're there. I feel them. You feel them? Come on over here. She feels them. Feel them for me. Where? Right where? Right where? You feel it? What? 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 I can't hear you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Feel him again. Make sure. Nothing there. Somebody give God praise. Come on. Come on, somebody give God a shout. My God. Yes. Three months ago, I began having pain here. Yeah. I had a pelvic ultrasound. Yeah. And they found. There's a lady here. You've been having a lot of pain right around your waist. Pay attention. It's connected to the last child that you had. If you'll trace when this pain began, it was connected to the last time you gave childbirth. Where are you? This is a big release. Is that you, ma'am? Hurry, ma'am, quickly. Tell me about this, quickly. I always have the pain from here through here. And you trace it back to your last child? Yes. How long ago was that? It's 15 years. 15 years. How often does this hurt? Most of the time. Is it hurting now? Yes. You're sure? Positive. Right where? Right where? Where? Well, where? Where? What? I'm healed. You don't have pain. Somebody give God a shout by the Holy Ghost. Come on. My God. Come on, see, I got to have it now. Begin to change this. Sometimes putting it into the future is just plain lazy. Sometimes it's just you're afraid. What if it doesn't happen? You recalibrate. But you risk everything now. And, and if the least thing that you get is you get confirmation something wonderful has started. This is amazing right here. And tell me about this. So you're in pain right now? A little bit. Not much. Not much where at? Right here. Right where? Here. Here. Right there. There's a diverticulitis being healed. Diverticulitis. Quickly, diverticulitis being wonderfully healed by the power. By the Holy Ghost. Oh, we give you Ooh. praise. Yes, ma'am. What's this? Fibroids. Can you feel them? I, no, I don't feel them, but they hurt. They hurt? Yes. Come on over here. Because we don't want to hide anything. So I want to pull this back here a little bit. So tell me where they hurt. On the right. right where? On the right. On the right. Are they hurting now? No. Huh? No. I thought you said they were. They hurt, but they're not hurting now. <laughs> tell her what that means. <laughs> How are we doing? What do you mean you're good? I'm blessed. I'm healed. Restored completely. But there's no more pain. Are you amazed at that? You had that 15 years. 15 years, yes. 
Did you know that was going to happen this morning? I know every time I'm here, I know something good. Oh! Expectation. Expectation. So she's in it. Some of you got to get in it more. Got to get in it more. What's going on over here? Where's next over here? Young lady, yes? I have fibroids. Uh -huh. Tell me about it. Um, I first um, noticed when I had an ultrasound on my 28th week of pregnancy. Um, they were very painful for me. Um, There's a cataract coming off on the right eye. Cataract coming off on the right eye. That eye's almost blind. There's a cataract coming off the right eye. Quickly, hurry. Don't wait. Don't wait another second for that. Cataract coming off the right eye. Now, when eye. that's called, people learn is to that you, do what we're supposed to do. You jump is up, Is that that you man move. right here with the cataract? Is that you, sir? With the cataract? Come on over here. Stand right next to me. By the Holy Ghost, we give you prayer. And oh, don't ever Jesus. come for anything. How long that, you had the cataract? Just because you want to uh, come. Because you ruined the flow. What? A couple of months. A couple of months. The doctor told you that? or? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Both of your eyes or just the right eye? Just the right eye. What'd you think whenever that said the right eye? Uh, it's blear. I can't hardly see too much. Really? Yeah. Close your eyes quickly, sir. So the power of God's coming all over you. When I touch your eye, the blood will go back into your eye. This is all restricted blood flow. It's all that it is. There's nothing wrong with your rods, your cones, your pupil, your retina. There's nothing wrong. It's restricted blood flow. But when I touch you, the blood opens up. You hear me, sir? By the power. Oof. My God, sir. Oof. Bring him up. Bring him up. Open that eye. Whew. Clear? It got clear? No. No? You can still what? I'm sorry. You feel the power all over you, yeah. He feels the power. Close your eyes. He feels the power all over his eyes, over his body. He's removing that, sir. He's removing it. You're coming up without anything on that eye at all. He's already seeing better, but there's like a little piece of charcoal there. By the Holy Ghost. We give you praise by the Holy Ghost. Just rub it around a little bit and look up. Okay. Better? It is. Give God praise. Come on. Come on. How, how much better? Uh huh. Can you see better now to that side? What's over here? One, Close this eye. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. You couldn't see that before. He couldn't see that before. Yeah. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Yeah. Yes. What's this? Cataract? By the Holy Ghost, we give you praise. We give you praise. What's this, ma'am, here? The fibroids? How long you had these? Oh, over 25 years. There's a lung cancer being healed. Someone with spots on your lung. God's removing the spots from your lung. They told you there's a spot or spots on your lung. Nodules are being healed right now. Who is that? Hurry. Somebody. Your mother. Oh, the power's all over this lady right here. There's not nodules. My breast, I had two CAT scans and a mammogram, and they found that I have nodules all over. No more nodules. No more nod. Oh, the power of the Holy. I said no more nodules. You can't take me with you, man. Please. There you go. Come on, somebody give God a shout. She wanted to take me with her. Come on, give him a shout in this place. Oh. What's the matter here, ma'am? Huh? You have nodules where? Uh huh. You feel them? Did you before? My eye opened up. My right eye opened up. Huh? Let me see your neck. Put your head back. Uh huh. Yeah. 
you're weak. You're very weak and you're, you're very fearful. And God's breaking that tonight, okay? He's breaking If You're going to be okay. You're going to live out your years. These are going to dissolve. There's nothing wrong. They're not going to metastasize. They're going to dissolve. You hear me? By the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Lungs, what happened here? Um, diagnosed with nodules on my lungs. Nodules in the lungs. Put your hands up. He's healing your lungs, sir. He's extending your life. He's extending your lifespan. He said to tell you mercy's passed over your house. Mercy has passed over your house. And to quit connecting the dots to careless living that put a cause to this. Because God said mercy's passed over your house. Everything's been eradicated. They're not there. You're going to live out your days. Woo! By the Holy Ghost. Somebody give him a shout. Come on. Oh. You felt that. Huh? What did that feel like? Huh? I just feel the Lord. Yeah. It's, it's I don't know how to explain it. Um, something's going on. <laughs> That's what I could tell you. It's going all through you. I feel light. I feel very light. Touch him again, Master. Touch him. Oh, that's the power on you, sir. Touch him again. Scrape the lungs. Scrape the lungs. We give you praise. You know, you just never know when you've averted death and don't even know it. Because he said he's added years to your life today. Come on, give God a big shout. Come on. What's happening? My right eye, yeah. my right eye, I had, I, because of some surgery, yes. I, I had lost the peripheral vision. I had no right peripheral and? vision. It's opened up. Oh! oh, that was hardly even an excitement, what? I'll tell you what. Oh, my God. Jesus. How, how long you had that, ma'am? Over a year, you couldn't see peripherally. Yeah, I just went back to my eye doctor last week. And he said, it's just as good as it's going to get. <laughs> get up on that stage and celebrate. Go, go, go. Come on, ma'am. Come on, somebody give God a shout. My God. I think she's happy. I don't know. No refunds here, by the way. No refunds today. What do you need here, ma'am? You have what? How long you had that? Both eyes? Both eyes? Yes. Close your eyes. You're going to be okay, ma'am. You're going to be okay. Your eyes will be clear today. Your eyes will be clear. Jesus. Yeah, by the Holy Ghost. What's over here, ma'am? Oh, hey, sir. By the Holy Ghost, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. What's been taken from you is going to be given back to you. Mm -hmm. September, October, November, December. Time of discovery for you. Rediscovery. You're going to rediscover. That which has been taken from you. Your drive, your passion, your fire is all going to come back by the Holy Ghost. Somebody give him God's shout. Come on. Yes, ma'am. What is this? How long you had this? Huh? How bad? Were you almost blind or what? Uh -huh. Tell me how you see. How do you see? You're better already? You're better already. What do you think of that? What do you think of that? How long have you had this? Standing in line, she gets healed. Somebody give God a shout. Somebody giving praise all over this place. Oh! Right here, ma'am. Come on, quickly. Oh. Well, somebody is supposed to preach today, Pastor. I told you. I tried, I tried to tell you back there. That Pastor Jerry, she's a take charge kind of person. I'll tell you that right. Oh, 
what are we doing here, ma'am? I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to pray for you, but there's going to be a resurrection inside here. You're going to get back your, your purpose. You're going to get back your honor. The seat of honor has been taken from you, but you're going to get it back. Close your eyes. By the Holy Ghost, I give you praise. The best years are not behind you. They're ahead of you. Oh, by the Holy Ghost. It's the power. Mm. Keep your eyes closed, ma'am. Bring her up. Keep your eyes closed. Bring her up, guys. Whew. Yes? Yeah, okay. So they're better. Just rub them a little bit. Rub them. That power's in you. That anointing's resident. It's moving in you. That better's going to turn into best. But things are turning in your favor. You've had seven bad years. You're about to have seven phenomenal years. Yes! Run down there. Come on, go, go. Come on. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, church. Yes! How's that better? Hmm? By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. We give God praise. Oh, Mammy's all over you. Jesus! We give him praise. There's three ladies with lumps on your breast. There's three of you here. One lady has one lump. The other two ladies have multiple lumps. You're here this morning. I want you to come quickly. Those lumps are going to go. How many lumps? You what? Uh-huh. How many? Can you feel them? You can feel them. You're sure. Can you feel them? What? 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 Don't feel too hard. My gosh, girl. Come on. She don't feel any lumps. You better get moving. You better get up there moving. Get moving, girl. Somebody better give God a shout. They were where? Everywhere. All over. They had them all. She had them all over. All over. I've had all kind of tests and they've been all over. And I just always pray, God, whenever I have it, I do it twice a year. Mammograms, let it be negative. All over for years. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you what, I don't know about you, but I feel them. I feel them. I walk by faith, but I want a God that I can feel. I got a soul too. Come on, somebody help me. I mean to tell you, I'm with these lumps back here. Come on. How many, girl? How many? Where are they at now? can't find any. She had multiple lumps. She cannot find one lump. Get up there with your friend. Get yourself up there. Come on, somebody help me today. Come on, somebody help me. I hope we got some excited men here today. I'll tell you what. Who might have paint this sanctuary blue tonight? I don't know. Ma'am, where'd she go? Ma'am, get up here. I didn't tell you to come down. Get up here. How long you had those? How many years? 
15 years and they're all gone wow hallelujah oh, Jesus. you've had all those for 15 years hallelujah they call it cystitis and so I have to keep doing mammograms every year just to make sure and to keep a check when's the last time you checked the lumps hallelujah in uh, May and I had to do a ultrasound you could feel them and now you don't feel anything. What do you think of this? God is a good God. God is a good God. They hurt so bad. Wait, wait. They what? They what? They hurt it so bad. They hurt so bad. Thank you, Jesus. Up to last night, they were hurting me so bad. Last night. God is a good God. God is so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you what. Something's about to break around here. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Come on. Ooh. My God. What's happening over here? No longer there. What? I had a lump in my right breast for over a year, and it's no longer there. Stand to your feet. Somebody stand to your feet. Come on, somebody give God praise. Come on. Come on. Just a minute. Now tell the people you had that over a year. Over a year. And I thought for a while that it was gone. It was there though. The pain was gone, but it was still there. And I would never felt like I needed to come up for healing because I trusted God that he was going to heal me. And today the Holy Spirit told me to just touch my breast and it was gone. I'll tell you what. There is something flowing in here this morning. Yes, that's, yes. It's jumping all over yes. this room. Yes, it is. It is. It is. There's a lot of peace coming back into your life because you've been pretty distraught and pretty scattered. You hear me? But that focus is coming back. You've, you've gotten off track a little bit here, but God's going to get you back on course, back on track. Come on, say back on track. Back on track. Back on track. Because you're a good girl. You're God's girl. You're God's girl before you're anybody's girl. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a big shout. Come on. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. How are we doing? What? What's this? The paper uh, the doctor gave me, I went for mammogram. They say I have a lot of lumps, but I believe I received my healing today. When you say I need the presence and the power, I want it in this without knowing you're going to talk about that. And God blessed me and he healed me. And I thank my God. Get up on there and do the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. having a lot of lumps every six months I have to get a mammogram and a ultrasound done yeah. but I'm pretty young the doctor told me so I still have to do it Th two days ago I was in so much pain sometimes I have to hold the breast to put pressure on it that's how much it hurts and then uh, sometimes I feel lumps all over but now that I'm touching it I don't feel anything I'm pressing on it but there's nothing there
What, what's going through your mind? Right now, I, like, I always felt that I don't have to worry about it. That God got in control, which I never worry about it, even though I'm in pain. For some reason, I just never worry about it. So now I feel I'm healed. No more pain. No more pain. Put your hands up. He's healing your inside today too. Okay. Mm. You know, you girls can get connected to Boaz or you can get connected to Bozo. And sad to say, sometimes you go through Bozo to get to Boaz. Sometimes your bozo can be converted and turn into Boaz. <laughs> Ladies, put your hands up and say, I got to have Boaz. Come on, somebody. I have Boaz. Come on, say, my bozo days are over. I'm a woman of worth. A rare and valued treasure. And I deserve a Boaz. Come on, give God a shout. The power. actually brought the doctor she didn't even know this was gonna well none of us knew this was gonna happen today that's because you have two pastors that are very fluid they'll turn on a dime to get you blessed come on let's give it up for pastor Stan and pastor Jerry come on I need an usher here I need an usher to get a hold of this what's going on here ma'am you may be seated I don't know what time it is. What time is it here? I'm sorry. I'm sorry? I have lump in the breast. I'm so excited about November and, I, and God isn't waiting till November. That's right. You got that right. Hallelujah. I want you to get on the phones for that service that Sunday morning and Sunday night. Get on the phones. Get people here. We're going to have a great time. Well, I thought we were going to wait till then, but God's moving at this moment. Is that right? What's going on here, sweetheart? I came here with the pen this morning. Sometimes I have the pen very come from here to my breast. But um, I was sitting there with the pen. Well, when you call it, the pen is gone. But I have like a, a peach pen in here that's still there. Where? Where? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody gotta help me a little bit. Come on. You, you have to understand. You have to understand. I can't heal anybody. But whenever I see this stuff flowing and God moving, the least we can do is get excited about it. And I tell you, if this gets out, you will lose your seat. <laughs> Bahama Breeze will take up the first three rows. Come on. You better watch out. Be out there all angry in the parking lot because you can't get your chair. Bring her up. This is a sweet girl here. Very sweet girl. Beautiful beautiful how are we doing sweetheart how you feel no pain no pinch no pain no nothing look at me you're free there's no cancer going to be in you all the days of your life all the days and everything that was in your gene pool has been broke the curse of your ancestors will never come on you or your children that's right Jesus come on somebody Yes, ma'am.
everybody just start worshiping wow. God. Wow. 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 That's amazing. And I'm happy for you. Put your hands up. Holy Ghost, I thank you for that. And I thank you for her patience. And I thank you for her faith. Mm. I give you praise. You know, you, we change our seasons with our decisions. Weeping indoors for a night, but joy's coming in the morning. There's a new season on you, ma'am. Yes, yes. Come on, somebody help me today. Oh. Yes, ma'am. I'm telling you, yes. What's this? I was 13. I've been going to the doctor for, for cysts, for fibroids, for... Um, things they've seen in my breast. I've gone every three months since I was 13. I'm not here because of that. I'm here because of fear. I want fear to lead my life because I've been afraid since I was 13 that cancer would enter my life because it happened to my grandmother. But I'm here because I'm not afraid. I don't want to be. How, how old are you? 31. 31. 18 years you're battling this. Mammogram since you were how old? Uh huh. Let's walk back here. I want the people to see this. Let's walk back here. She's been battling this for 18 years. See, it's one thing to have fear. It's another thing to not have fear, but fight fear. You want to keep the bear outside the cabin. When the bear gets in the cabin, it's a different bear. There's nothing wrong with fighting fear. Just so you know it's on the outside. But when fear gets in you, it's a whole nother issue. I mean, that's whenever you got to ratchet up the word and drive it out or get hands on you and get delivered or both. But you don't want to continue in that sad, sorry state because it'll deprive you of so much. This girl's been fighting fear for 18 years. And it's, see, the devil's very patient. He'll pound on you just trying to break down that, you know. You're going to get cancer. You're going to get cancer. It's never the problem. It's always the voice behind the problem. Yes. It's the voice behind the problem that we fight the most. And he's relentless. And that's why you got to have that standard that you raised up. You just can't fight him with your good looks. Come on, somebody. Yes. Your new cologne and your new handbag. Your Louis Vuitton bag. Come on, the devil's not afraid of your Louis Vuitton bag. <laughs> or your new high heels. He's not afraid of those high heels. But he's afraid of the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. You better get with it today. Yes. You're going to be okay. You're going to make it. Put your hands up. But God's going to put a hedge of thorns about you. Because there's another kind of spirit after you. And we're not going to talk about that. But it's after you. And we know what we're talking about here. Don't we? Okay, keep your hands up. When I touch you, it's more than this other thing. The fear, it's this other thing that's really, that's where your battle is. And God's going to send grace. He makes all grace abound toward you. I mean, this is a fixed fight. It's over. Whew, by the Holy Ghost. Somebody give God a shout. Come on. Oh, church. Come on. You can't get embarrassed because you have a need. Nobody leaves this planet without marks. Jesus got scratched up. If they scratched him, you're going to get some scratches. So don't be ashamed. You know, wear, wear what you've been through with your healing as a badge of honor. I've been healed. I've been delivered. Say the word delivered. Say it delivered. Don't be ashamed of that word. Nobody said you are a demon, but sometimes you get passengers. Come on. You stop at the wrong place and they get on. Come on. 
Quit making a big deal about it. Make a big deal about God. Make a big deal about His written word. Come on, make a big deal about His prophecies. Make a big deal about His faithfulness. Magnify the right thing. Help this girl up. Come on, sweetheart. How do you feel? You do, don't you? It broke, didn't it? It's over. And that spirit cannot get you. Do you hear me? Put your hands up. Come on, say 1 Timothy 4.12. I'm an example, I'm an example. Of, a of a young person. I'm an example of purity, of, purity. Of, affection, of affection, of the wholeness of God. Of the wholeness of God. And I'm never going the other way. Somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on, give God a praise in this way. Come on, big guy. What's going on here, big guy? I got to stand up here so I can see you. What? I know it's with a nod you. A nodule where? Huh? Right where? So what? Does it hurt? You feel it? You're breathing? What? Get short of breath sometime. You get short of breath? So what did they say the nodule is? A precursor to something else or what? Well, I guess through TB. Right? TB. You had TB. And it left a nodule. So you're thinking the TB might be coming back. You thought you were healed. You know you're healed. Well, how's come you're up here? Put your hands up. Put your hands up. You're okay. Just because you got diagnosed that you had something don't mean you still have it. Come on. I used to have a little red wagon. I don't have it no more. Some of you used to have baby dolls. We pulled the string and they talked. You don't have no more talking baby dolls. There's a lot of things you had, but you don't have now. Quit letting one blood test, one urine test, one saliva test, one thyroid gland test. Quit letting one test dictate the next several years of your life. You are in the anointing. Come on, every time you walk in here. Every time you grace this sanctuary. Every time you open up your Bible. Quit leaving, quit leaving the devil steal. Put pressure on the manifestation. Just because you're sitting down with the cheeseburger, you don't just have to bless the cheeseburger. See, man, I bless the cheeseburger. Oh, and I thank you for taking that nodule away. Hallelujah. Quit praying lunch and food prayers over food and, and offering prayers over offerings. Bring the Holy Ghost in. He'll cover the whole thing. Yes. My God. Sir, you're fine. That nodule isn't even there. Oh. <laughs> it's not even there. It left it, but as you walked up here. Lord. You hear me? Lord. You're going to live out your days in the joy of the Lord. You're going to live out your day. Oh, Come on, somebody give God a shout. What's going on here? What's the matter? You mentioned three different things that confirmed my healing. You said you talked about anesthesia. That's why I postponed it. I had fibroids when I was pregnant. My son is three months old. Yeah. I had seven. I said, Lord, I don't want to have surgery. I don't want to have surgery. I did a ultrasound. They say, man, we still have to have surgery. You don't have seven, but you have three. I said, Lord, please, I'm, I'm counting on my blessings. You talked about a baby, having a baby, and you feel the pain. Once in a while before my menstrual come on, I run. You couldn't breathe. You had trouble breathing. Run. Run around this church. Come on, I don't see you run. <laughs> Come on, give him a God bless you right now. So what are you saying to me? What are you saying? I'm healed. I'm healed. Of what? Of? Five points. Five points. I went from seven to three, and I know God has made it to zero. I have no more fibroids. I will not have surgery because I don't need it. Oh! Yeah. Somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on. What do we have here? Fibroids. Um, I went to the doctor Thursday. 
Um, they planning the surgery. They're calling me Monday to plan the surgery. Yeah. I have two here, one on my pelvis. Um, Power's all over you. Power's all over you. You're fine. Power's all over you. We give God praise. Come on over here. What's this? By the Holy Ghost, we give him praise. Come on, we give him praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on. What is this? Hurry quickly, quickly. What is this? How do you know? Uh huh. And how do you know? Last year, I went to the doctor and it was down to three. And I was standing here in line, and the power of God, I could feel the heat. She felt heat standing in the line. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, right here, all three of you, right here, quickly, all three of you. Put your hands up. It's amazing. Jerry's coming to teach on the blessing. You're getting that before he gets here. Woo, by the Holy Ghost. Come on, by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Don't cover her up. Don't cover her up. Bring her up to me. Bring this girl up to me. There's a curse being broken here. Oh, she can't even get up hardly. So I don't know if you can get up, guys. This thing breaks over you today. This breaks like a pretzel, like a piece of thin balsa wood. This anointing is going to be on you for 72 hours, the next three days. And God's going to overwhelmingly convince you that he is on your side. That he doesn't have the favorites you think he does. You're one of his favorites. Woo. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on, sister. What's going on here? We need blessing. Huh? What do you need? Healing and blessing. What's wrong with healing? What do you mean healing? What kind of healing do you need? Um, I have cramps in my hands sometimes. You have cramps? Where in both hands? They're hurting now? They hurt. You have cramps right now. You do. Just hold my hand. Put your band, both hands on my hand. Here comes the power. Where's your cramps? This gone. Come on, somebody help me. My God, come on. Woo! Huh? Cramps. No more cramps. I'm here. Is that your husband? That's a friend. Come on over here. You're a friend of hers? What do you think about what happened to her? Well, I believe that God can turn anything around. He's the God of... Just turn around. So you see what it did back in the days when they walked to the streets of Galilee. We know he can do the same thing today. And we believe. Amen. Put your hands up. He's going through you with fire today. Fire of God's going through you. You're going to begin to see things a little different than you've ever seen them. You're not going to just follow from a distance. You're going to get in close to God. Get in close to God. Come on, somebody help me today. Yes. My God. What's this? I don't see through my right eye. You don't see out of your right eye? No, and I don't hear too good. You don't hear too good. Fell and... We charge after two healings. We charge money. <laughs> The first two are free. The third one we charge you. So, you have a credit card on you? D debit card? You got to be careful when you get into this because if you start getting into multiple requests, your faith gets scattered. And when faith is scattered, it's weak faith. Focus on something. Get healed. Move on to the next thing. If God chooses to do everything at once, great. David said to Goliath, this day, you're my problem. God's delivered you. Tomorrow, I'll take care of Bathsheba and Saul and Absalom. But today, you're my problem. Quit making everything your problem. Get a victory. Get a notch on your belt. Come on, be the baddest gunslinger in the world of life. Come out! You're going to be okay. I'm going to get my hand up underneath your glasses. This side's going to... No, leave them on. 
this eye is going to open up. You're going to see. Okay? Then we're going to get to hearing. Then we're going to get your leg. What else do you need? <laughs> now, once this happens, you'll be like 10 miles from happy, okay? <laughs> By the Holy Ghost, I thank you. Oh, the power's on this lady. I break the deaf and I break the blind in Jesus' name. Let the rods and the counts. Close this eye. That's her blind eye. What do you think of that? Huh? Are you happy? Are you really happy? I'd hate to see her get her really happy. How long have you been blind in that eye? Um, the doctor operated on it. How long ago? About nine years ago. And it just came open. Right? Yeah. Do you understand there's missionaries that serve a lifetime and haven't seen in years what we've seen here this morning? She's been blind in that eye for nine years, eight or nine years, and it just opened up. Don't force me to rent excited people. I can rent excited people. I'll go bust them in. I, I'm worried about this section over here. You see, when that's in the atmosphere, the number one way disease is spread in the earth is the airstream. That's how disease is going over the planet. More than the food, you know, more than what you think. It's that airstream that carries germ and virus and bacteria and just drops it in different places. Every year in Tampa Bay, in the Gulf of Mexico, it's called red tide. And dust from Africa and that part of the world picks up in the airstream. It comes over and it drops into the Gulf and kills millions of fish every year. The airstream. Massive transportation. But when you're in a meeting like this, that's far beyond any one person, and it hits that airstream, it means it's going over the whole sanctuary. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Say, say, and, and what I mean is, if I was some of you, when you go out of here, I mean, before you hit the parking lot, I'd be checking and feeling and scratching and doing anything I can. Because I believe we have some canceled surgeries here today. Come on. I believe we have some medication. No more. Ma'am, 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 wait, ma'am. So you're happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Come on over here. Anybody have any happy pills here today? Come on. How happy are you, though? Very happy. I love her. I love her. And how about the year? Did we get the year? Did that come open, too? The year came open, too. Her blind eye and her deaf ear came open. How about your leg? The leg still hurts. So we got two out of three. Do you want another prayer? One more prayer? Is this your home church? Is this your home church? Pastor Stan's your pastor? What do you think of him personally? Very good. What do you mean very good? Blessed. Blessed? Is he anointed? Mm-hmm. How about Jerry? Not Savelle, Jerry, Pastor Jerry. He's blessed. Okay. 
See, without them, nothing like this happens. For them to sit back and just give up a Sunday morning, I believe uh, Pastor uh, Stan Jr. was to preach today, for them to get out of the way. There's a whole lot of love here. It's hard to find a place like this. They care about you. There's a revival coming to South Florida. My God, I hear the sound. I hear the sound. This is a foretaste, an appetizer. Mm. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. My, oh, my, oh, my. Come on, hands up all over the place. Come on, say the sky is opening up over South Florida. There is an open heaven, and this is our time, and we will not miss it. As a church, as a person, we will not miss our day of visitation. Bring it on, Jesus. Come on, give him a shout. There's such a power here. 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 Come on, somebody. Come on, put your hands up.
want you to put your hands high in the air, okay? In just a few short minutes, I'm going to turn this mic back over. I, I, nothing in me wants to turn it over, but it's just we need to do and move forward today and plan. This is a Category 5 headed our way. Come on, say it. Cat 5 is coming our way. Mm. Just stay there for a moment. Your back is injured? My lower back. Huh? My lower back. What happened? I was involved in an accident on the 4th or uh, 3rd of July. We were going out of town, a family reunion or whatever or something. So I'm just having some problems with it. Sometimes if I move the wrong way, it just hits a nerve or something like that. Uh, about two weeks ago, I couldn't hardly walk. I had to get a... Uh, right. Right. So, t- so when, where's it hurt right now, though? It's sore in... Right, right where? Wh- which part? Amazing. Amazing. It must be our time. It must be our time. Mm. We got one more we want to take care of. I'm sorry. Little this baby. Is, this is. Who? Braylon? Huh. She broke her leg um, a year ago. So she hasn't walked straight since the end. We've been going back and forth to some of the top orthopedics in mm-hmm. Chicago and here. Um, and they want her to have surgery so she can walk straight fast. Does she walk at all? She walks, but she just doesn't walk straight. And she's still... What do you mean she don't walk straight? What do you mean, her gait? Yeah. Like she's like... Uh, it's a little crooked. Uh, okay. Right? Yeah. So you want her leg to get straight? Yes. So what do you think the Lord can do? Do you think he... You think he has to have a, a resource uh, that out, or can he do it? You think he can do it? Mm-hmm. You don't want her to what? She doesn't have to go through the surgery. And it's your baby girl. And her foot's okay? And her foot needs straight. Oh, my. And so her leg is... Let me walk for me, sweetheart. Can you walk for me? I can't tell because she's not walking... Is it? Yeah, I can see a little crooked there. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Well, never, you never want to scare little children. Sometimes you can scare them, and uh, I've done my fair share of scaring little children. Okay, here we go. We're going to believe this leg is going to get straight, and bones are going to move. Okay. We see bones move all the time. I have a footage I wanted to show you this morning. We didn't get it here in time, but very similar to this. And what's your daughter's name again? Braylon. Braylon. Put your hands up for Braylon. Come on, all over the place. Come on, faith people. Let's faith it. Come on. Holy Ghost, we thank you for every crooked thing being made straight. We thank you for bones moving in her body today. We thank you, Lord, for change. We thank you for change. We thank you that she will not need the surgery. By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost on the mama. Give me the daughter. Come on, give me the daughter. Give me the daughter. Come on over here, sweetheart. Let's walk. Come on, let's walk. Let's walk. Oh my. Come on. She's afraid. Nah, I'm going to scare her. Her leg bomba is straighter than it was before. Do you see that? Do you see it? I'm trying. I I don't want to frighten her. Here, skid her out there a little bit. Oh, my God. Something's happening in the leg. Come on, Sam. We got movement. 
Wow. Mama, those bones are moving. So all day long, you're going to prophesy to bones. That's what we people of faith do. Come on, say, we prophesy to bones. That's what we do. That's who we are. And these bones will live and get right in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a shout. Straight. Jesus. Straight. Yes, ma'am. How are you, sweetheart? Multiple back problems uh -huh. and scoliosis real bad. Uh -huh. And I've been diagnosed with bipolar. Well, just because you're diagnosed don't mean it's accurate. Right? I mean, so do you feel bipolar? The pain in my back is terrible. Is it? How long has it been there? A few years. Does it hurt right now? Yes. You're sure? Well, not all together. What's that mean? What in the world does that mean? What kind of an answer is that? I ask you if you have pain, you said, well, it's not all together. What in the world are you talking about? What I'm talking about is some is severe than others. Okay, what is it right now? You don't feel it? No. <laughs> you think this is an easy job? I'm telling you right now. You got to have all kind of gifts flowing. <laughs> he healed the pain. There's no pain. And it won't come back. And you're not going to need any medication either. He's going to bring you off medication. And you're going to get straight here in a couple seconds. You ready? I said, are you ready? Come on, somebody give God a shout. The power and just, I want you to pull up. The moment I touch you, you just pull up. God's softening everything. You can do this. You can be straight again. You hear me? What's your name? Lorraine. No pain, Lorraine. That's your new nickname. No pain, Lorraine. You ready? When I say three, you get straight. One, two, three. Straight, pull up! Oh, the power's on. Don't cover her. Don't cover her. Lay back, Lorraine. Lay back, Lorraine, on your back, please. Lay back. Put your hands over your head. Come on. Put your hands over your head. Your other hand. Now move to the move to your right. Just move your head to your right. That's it. Just move it. There you go. Not your whole body. I want you laid flat. Come on. Do me a favor. There you go. Right there. Right there. Right there. You're straight right there. You're straight. Take your left hand away. Take your left hand away. You're still straight. Is this on the big screen? Yeah. Take your right hand away. You're straight. Where's her son at? Is that you're the son? Have you ever seen her that straight in a long time? I can't hear you. No. God's moving the bones. People, you have to understand, you have to partner with this. You can't just be a spectator. Come on, say, go, God, go. Go, God, go. You got to get moving on the inside. He'll start it, but you got to feed it. He'll start it, but you got to feed it. Something's going on around here. There's a revival coming right here. It's here. It's here now. 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 Hallelujah. Glory be to God. 
was last week or the week before. And I don't know if it was in the big service or the, the services that we've been doing it. How about this, prayer warriors? What did I tell you? We were either going to what? Birth it or a... Uh, and we didn't abort it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. This is a foretaste. It broke today. This is just the beginning. But if you don't feed it, it'll dry up. We're going to feed it with our faith. And we're going to work with the man of God. So that he can exercise his gifts. And we can get into agreement with his gifts. When two or more agree as touching anything who's going to be in the middle of it oh everybody say Jesus hallelujah glory be to God hallelujah. thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus hallelujah. thank you Lord hallelujah. we're just believing those just straightening right up tall and straight and raising our arms hallelujah now one thing that struck me She's getting straightened up. Wow, 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 wow. Glory. Hallelujah. You got that? Jesus. Oh, my. Hey, none of this, none of this is maintenance free. You know, only the preacher can only do his part. This doesn't mean you leave here and you're on, you know, you're just going to the beach with Coppertone today. You've got to get in behind this and push and get your faith involved. Mm. I got to hurry and give this mic away here. Again, just back. Come on, say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every crooked thing straight. Every crooked thing straight. My day of crooked is over. My day of crookedness is over. <laughs> Amazing. Still a little ways to go, but she is a miracle in motion. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Lord said the words of life fellowship church is going to be manifested, minded. The man of when the man of God comes by, everybody everybody in this church is getting healed. This is going to be the healthiest church in the world. Actually, and... you've been confessing that for years, hasn't he, congregation? That you are the healthiest church in Florida. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Lord showed me, said, Pastor Billy would be coming up and would introduce him to you. But the Lord said to me, he said, get ready, what's going to happen? <laughs> he said, why didn't I warn him? Well, we're warning him when he comes back on November, you better bring everybody in town. Because <laughs> we're going it, to, it, it could go longer than one night, one day. That's we'll do Billy. exactly what God wants, amen? <laughs> Pastor Billy. By the stripes of Jesus. I am totally healed. But, uh, 
get behind me. said you were going to lay hands on me I'm, when you said manifest and minded we got to get manifest and minded we're just we're praying and praying and hoping and praying now we're mind, we're manifest and minded manifest means this is coming to pass and it is happening to me and it's happening to me right now here to lay hands on me I will, I will manifest Come on, say, thank you for the word. Thank you for the touch. And thank you for the DNA. But I got to get to the pool. I got to have it. Manifestation. Manifestation. You've been, to, you've been to church this morning. Let's give the Lord a shout. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You may be seated. You know, Friday night we were talking. We had some serious talk over in, in the youth. Those of you that were with me on Friday night. And I said then, I said, it's, it's time to stop tolerating. It is time to put a stop to it. And there's only one person that can do it for you. You. But we can all be together in unison that we're all doing it. It's just time. And there's been enough prayer there's been enough word I told them Friday night I said the group that was sitting with me Friday night we had enough dynamite in us to blow the roof off and I think we did this morning and open heaven was here hallelujah but it's just the beginning everybody say just the beginning this is the new day, the new time, the new hour, the new season, and we're right smack in the middle of it with Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right, you know what you need to do here. You are a giving church, and if there would be ever a day when you should dig into your pocket now and give God your worship with your giving, that's how you let him know. When you give, you show your love, don't you? When you give, you show you love. I want to tell you something. There's been about 200 people that have been coming to this church for two years now, maybe two and a half years. And I'm going to tell you something. Those 200 or so that have been coming with me on Friday night, they love you too. Because they've been here praying and believing and we've been strengthening ourselves with the word of God and what God really wants and what should be. And so they have shown their love for this church and for you and for Pastor I, for Pastor and I, because if there's ever been anything that I've known that this church is supposed to have, it's signs, wonders, and miracles. What else is this church supposed to have? Glory be to God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Uh, ushers, are you uh, giving out, please, envelopes? And uh, we'll just receive our worship in, in our giving this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, 
Oh, look what the Lord has done. Sing it. Glory be to God. And do it a little faster. I like it faster. Once the Abrahamic covenant ushers, are you ready? Get your offering, wave it, worship him. Father, we bring it through our high priest, our Lord Jesus Christ.